How you going guys? Curtis from Cutting Edge Engineering. So today's job, we're going to be drilling and tapping the hard jaws on our new three-jaw chuck for our big lathe. So when we first bought our Shenyang lathe, it only came with a 630mm four-jaw chuck, which really slows down setup times for the jobs that we do, because the majority of the work we do are rods, cylinders, and barrels. So what I've been doing is using the three-jaw chuck off my frontline lathe on this machine. They are the same spindle nose, so it does fit but this can swing up to 800 mil in diameter, where our smaller machine can only swing up to 660 mil. So it was about time we got a bigger three jaw for this lathe. So what we ended up getting was a Toolmaster three jaw chuck. It is made in China, so it is not the best quality. It still does run really true, but to buy a bison or a gator chuck would be about four times the price of what we paid for this. Because this machine isn't used every day of the week, it's not super important that we have a really good quality chuck on it, but this still gives us the capacity that we need because it is 500 mil in diameter. It does have 190 mil bore in it, so it will handle a lot of the larger jobs that we do. And with the external jaws in it, we can reach out to about 680 mil. So it's a really good fit for this lathe. Like I've done with all my other three jaw chucks, I'm gonna be drilling and tapping the face of the jaws so I can then run soft brass pads. So when I hang onto a piece of chrome or a piece of honed cylinder tube, I don't damage the surface. The main reason I do this is trying to set up a piece of chrome bar and hold a brass pad or an aluminium pad in place while you're trying to fit a job into it. It can be quite difficult and I did get sick of that pretty quickly. So we're gonna be drilling and tapping the face of the jaws in two locations. That way we can put a brass pad on the clamping face on the internal side, but we can also use them on the external side for grabbing larger diameter tubes. The face of the jaws is extremely hard, but that hardness does not go all the way through the jaws. It is just a top layer, so it's usually about a mil thick, but using the right tooling, you can get through that hardened layer and then you can drill and tap the jaws as if it's a normal piece of material. So to drill Drill and tap the hard jaws, I'm going to need to remove them from the chuck and take them over and set them up in the milling machine. Righto, so we've got our first jaw set up in the machine. I have found centre of the first area we are going to drill and tap. I will be using a 5mm carbide end mill because the carbide will go through the hardened layer very easily. If you were to attempt to use a standard drill bit or a high speed steel end mill, you would probably destroy it.
So we're through the hardened layer, it was about two mil thick. Yep. Generally feel whether you're through the hardened layer by the resistance coming back through the machine. So you'll notice the swarf is very, very fine and then all of a sudden it turns to just normal steel swarf. So we're through the hardened layer, I'm going to change out the tool so we can drill that hole and then we'll tap it. Right, so that's the hole done on the first face. What I'm going to do now is set up the hole position for the second face. So we're going to make the distance from this face to that hole the same as this face to this hole. That way we can use the same brass shim material on both of the clamping faces. So that's the first one done, two to go.
So that's all the drilling and tapping done on the hard jaws. Now we need to make the brass bolt-on pads. What did you get? You just wanted your banana. So the material that we're going to be using for the brass pads, it is a piece of 25mm brass flat bar and it is 2mm thick. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to mark out the lengths of the brass pads, then I'm going to mark out the hole positions and then I can drill them in the milling machine. Now we've got that done, I'm going to cut them to length on our hand guillotine. So the last thing I need to do, I need to bend them into shape. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bolt them to the hard jaws and use the hard jaw to form it into shape.
Right, so that's the job done. We've got our three jaws drilled and tapped. We've got our brass pads made for both the clamping faces. So now let's get them set up in the chuck. Righto guys, so that is the jaw set up and that is what it looks like with the internal brass pads installed and then we'll show you what it looks like with the external brass pads installed. So this little project took about an hour of my time and a bit over $20 in material and that was for the brass flat bar and for the bolts. So if you're able to do something like this, I really recommend doing it. It does save a lot of time trying to set up jobs because you'll drop a shim out, it'll fall into the swarf bin and then you've got to go digging for it. So that's how I drilled and tapped my hard jaws to take brass pads. Thanks for watching. Does that pocket go down? Here we go. So there, it was... I decided to drill and tap the face of the jaw, so... Which really limits our setup times. Limits? Is limits a good word for that? Just think about the words coming out of your mouth. I fucking was. Try again. Right, so when we first purchased... Oh, And then both clamping faces. <laughs> now what we need to do is refit the chuck jaws back into the chuck. And then what?